Welcome to part 7 of Dynasty Warriors 2 and in this part we're going to be taking on the Battle of Hafei. This is a Wu and Wei exclusive fight, so there shouldn't be no Shu intervention, right? Too bad I'm playing as Zhao Yun in this game. But, here is the thing, this is Wu's third stage, while this is Wei's fourth stage, because the third stage just so happens to be the Battle of Guangdu. So, without further ado, I'm going to pick Zhao Yun, and we're going to intervene in this stage on Cao Cao's forces once again. Because most of the important cutscenes happen on Cao Cao's force. And we vastly outnumber Wu, so let's get to the background, shall we? The naval forces of Sung Quan feel Cao Cao a major defeat. Cao Cao is forced to relinquish even his recently won Jing as he is driven back north. The real benefactor of this battle is Liu Bei. As Cao is driven back, he gains control of southern Jing. He later moves to Shu and builds his forces. In the year 215, Sun Quan and Liu Bei plan a joint attack on Cao Cao. They agree to move north, Sun Quan to Hefei and Liu Bei to Han Chong. Sun Quan gathers a hundred thousand men and personally begins the invasion. In Wei, Cao Cao is informed of the attack and personally leads his army to repel the invasion. He swears to repay Sun for his humiliating defeat. Oh, let me rephrase what I said earlier before the background. I meant to say that this is the fourth stage for Wu and the fifth stage for Wei because of the fact that Chur B takes place on both sides. However, in the case of Wei, Chur B is immediately after Guan Du. So, yeah. There is that. Sorry, excuse me, got a little bit of heartburn. Anyway, the gist of Hafei. We're trying to stop Lu Meng and Zhou Yu from cutting open an escape path for uh, Sun Xuan. But at the same time, we are cutting open a path so that Zhang Liang can get to Sun Xuan easily. That means we'll have to kill off a lot of soldiers in order for that to happen. And sure enough, we already ran into Zhou Yu and Sun Sheng Sheng, so this should not be as bad, considering the fact that, uh, the office, one of the officers we need to kill is right there. I mean, so long as, uh, Zhou Yu is alive, I mean, Zhao Yu is alive, sorry. Zhao Yu has the potential to try to redirect the entire Shu force over to South South's territory. And that's the main focus is to get rid of Zhou Yu and uh, Lu Meng so that they won't have a chance to turn the battle in their favor. However, Oh, and for the record, everybody's wondering why uh, Zhou Yu made that remark. This remark that he makes every time he dies was actually referenced to Zhuge Liang. And that is because every time uh, Zhou Yu has some master plan and some master strategy, Zhuge Liang always has another strategy lying in wait for him. And I think one of my officers eliminated Su Sheng Sheng, and yes, they did. As a matter of fact, she's gone. Which is kind of absurd, considering I didn't really kill her. I should have killed her, but I didn't. Oh, that would explain why I got the full heal, because my bodyguards killed off one of the officers. Great. That's one less um, upgrade to your stats that you have if your bodyguards or any other officer kill off an officer. That is on the enemy side. Now then, uh, as I was saying, oh yes, and every time Shigeleon does something to screw over uh, Xiaoyun, 
He always says that. Well, that was his last words before he died, according to Romance of the Three Kingdoms. And Zhuge Liang has pissed off Xiao Yu on so many occasions. To the point where Xiao Yu was literally coughing up blood in frustration, according to Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is why he had that message every time he dies in this game. That does not carry over into the other games, just this game. He has some other quote whenever he dies. And also, probably a better voice actor. Now then, uh... There is still the matter of... Dealing with, uh, Lu Meng, but first... Getting rid of, uh, Xu would help too, and oh my goodness! A slowdown, and a frame rate skip at the same time, and I apologize for this, folks. Uh-oh, looks like, uh, An Dong is trying to, uh, open a way for, uh, Xu Chuan to escape. But here is the thing. If Shahu Doom, who is guarding the right, and uh Shaho Doom, not Shao Doom, uh Shao Liun, I mean Shao God damn it! Shang Liao! I'm sorry, I am getting the names confused because of the fact of uh, uh both of those guys were supposed to be uh killing off the uh officers that's trying to stop you from getting to Sun Xuan, but if you manage to kill off uh, Xiao Ho Yuan and uh, Shang Liao, if you're on the Wu side, you'll be able to open up a path for uh, Sun Xuan. But if they die on the way path, well guess what? Every officer here is going to try to storm Hefei Castle with uh, Sao Cao having to deal with all those officers. It looks like Xiao Ho Doom is definitely dropping morale throughout the entirety of this fight. It's really uh, more on the lines of find them and kill them. That is what the whole gist of the way playthrough of this stage is. Meanwhile, for the shoe playthrough, you have to make sure that these guys don't break through. Oh, and one other thing. Zhang Liao, if you're playing on the Wu side, is the equivalent to Lu Bu in, uh... What was it? Oh, yes. Uh, the Battle of Hu Lao Gate. As in, he will have ridiculous buffs since he's the star of this battle, and since he turned the battle around and forced Wu to retreat. And there is still an enemy I'm missing. Yeah, right there, Lu Meng is right there. How am I- how did I miss this guy? Oh, yeah. Uh, forgot to mention, this is one of those stages where draw distance could be a pain, because in the middle of the stage, there is no rain. Here, there is rain, and enemies can actually use the cover of the rain to actually hide themselves. Lu Meng, I'm trying to find you, but you're not really visible at this point. And the worst part is, it is uh, a brain that is of a red hue, so most of the officers can actually blend in with the rain, which is ridiculous, and I finally found the guy. And look at him, he's wearing all red. I do believe the Dawn's guy is, like, oddly colored to the point where it's supposed to match the uh, outfits of the Wu officers. And that can be really frustrating, especially since the game has draw distance issues. I've already brought this up in uh, Wu Zhang Plains of how that happens with the uh, way officers and the complete darkness of Wu Zhang Plains. This issue is the same thing. And now they have sent Shang Liao. This is supposed to happen. Well, if you're on, uh, Wu, 
Oh, well, if you're on Wei. If you're on Wu, that means you're in serious trouble. That means you have to do whatever it takes to stop Zhang Liao and also stop Xiao Ho Dun. Because if you don't, your base will be under siege. Now then, is there anything else I need to mention? Oh right! This is also the stage where uh, Taishin Sir will actually be... I hope I didn't pronounce that correct, incorrectly. Taishin Sir? Yeah, that's what it is. He will be one of the tough ones if you're playing on the side of Wei. While I may be overpowered, still, he is one of those guys that if you're trying to gain level here, especially with a Wei officer, you're gonna find yourself on the shortest end due to the fact that he has a, uh, a, a combo that will break guard. And every time he uses that combo, you'll find yourself on the receiving end of a fierce combo, even though you only have about, uh, Four different combos in total. Four different combinations, because there's only like uh, one string that leads up to a total of four hits. When it comes down to Taishin Sir, he is really, really a dangerous enemy to have to deal with. And look at that! I just got knocked off my horse. And it has a lot to do with not only the slowdown, but I think Tyson Sir at the last minute hit me off my horse. And I forgot to mention one thing. You don't have aerial charge moves anymore. Well, not in this game anyway. You have them in three. And that is until you get like a better weapon. But in this game, no, you don't have aerial charge moves. And you don't have aerial charge moves in, uh... Well, actually, no, you do have aerial charge moves off the bat in Dynasty Warriors 4. It's this game where you, by default, don't have them, and you won't get them because they won't exist until, uh, 3. But running charge moves, you don't get those either. That's also in 3. No, wait, that's actually in 4. Sorry, that's in 4. Sorry, my bad misinformation. I gotta stop doing that. But I did deal with Taichi Sir because he is actually one of those officers you have to worry about the most. As again, he is one of those guard breakers. And uh, all three uh, kingdoms have that. For uh, Wei, the guard breaker just so happens to be uh, Zhu Xu. For Xu, that happens to be Zhang Wei. And my god, he's gotten nerfed in the, the later games. But in Dynasty Warriors uh, 2, especially 3 and especially 4, he is one of my favorite characters to play as. Because of the fact that he can break guard easily, and he is able to actually put the hurt on Lu Bu real fast with his new cell. Because of how... Uh, this game, how 3 actually focuses more on speed than what this game does. Now keep what I said in mind because speed is going to be the biggest problem in the final stage that I will do in the last part. See, if I didn't have this horse, well, pretty much for the majority of the game actually, but if I didn't have this horse, I would be still trying to walk up to the area where I need to go to try to uh, get that one officer I miss. And walking will take a long, long time. Because, well, the animations are really slow. They don't speed up the walking animations until maybe Dynasty Warriors 6? Definitely 7 and 8 they do speed up the animations. Because by default, you're walking really, really slow. And that can lead you to fail a lot of objectives. Again, keep what I said in mind for the next part. 
Well, I had to kill off Chin Du to make sure that the last force actually breaks through. And now all that's left is Sun Xuan and whatever officers he has backing him up. See, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh oh. Crap. If you, uh, happen to kill off all of his forces, Sun Xuan will have been surrounded, but reinforcements from Shu will show up. If by any chance, uh, most of your officers die, but Lu Meng actually makes a, is still alive, Lu Meng will make a way for Sun Xuan to escape so that reinforcements can take him away from the battle. Now, uh, I don't think they actually go for the escape route here. They just try to move him out of harm's way, basically. So you won't have to worry about uh, having to, uh, like, kill him. No, no, worry about him having to be killed. And the difference is, if you're playing with Wu, no, playing against Wu, sorry. You'll end up having to chase him and also Lumung down because they'll try to uh, go into a safe area. But nonetheless, Sun Xuan has been killed, and that is the end of Part 7 of Dynasty Warriors 2! Well, with enough of me, like, accidentally screwing up my commentary and stuff like that, thank god no bodyguards died, and look at my worthy opponent counts. Soon Shang Shang is not there because she was murdered by one of my bodyguards. But, nonetheless, we only got one more battle to deal with in this game, and the game will be over, and that battle is the Battle of Cherby. If any stage in this game is a clusterfuck, Cherby is that stage. And I will see you all in the finale, and trust me, that is exactly why I put that stage off last because it is a complete clusterfuck and I will tell you about it in part 8. See you guys next time.